While many of these mansions have been lost forever, some have fortunately been rescued and restored to their former Gold Coast luster. One mansion is Ohika Castle in Huntington, which remains the second largest private home ever built in the United States. Ohika Castle was the home of philanthropist banker Otto Kahn. Kahn was famous for throwing Gatsby-like parties in the mansion. After Kahn's death in 1934, his widow eventually sold off the house to the state sanitation department. It was then used by various agencies throughout the years until it was finally abandoned altogether in 1979. Ohika sat empty for several years, suffering fires, vandalism, and neglect. Well, my first impression of Ohika actually was a little, um, it was awe-inspiring, but at the same time a little scary because it was, it was huge and it was, it was in a complete, it was a complete wreck. So, you know, and my father bought it in 1984 and, and we're all thinking, oh my God, what are you going to do with this? Well, I always thought it could be restored. I, I didn't uh, think how big a job was going to be to restore. Uh, I think I underestimated that. Uh, Melius spent 25 years and over $30 million restoring the home. Today, Melius runs Ohika as a small luxury hotel and event venue. It offers guests a chance to experience what living in one of these Gold Coast mansions may have been like back in the heyday of the Gold Coast. And Otto Kahn's great-granddaughter agrees. And it's amazing how all of this can bring to the current generation a better appreciation of architecture, structure, history, and a lifestyle that um, you, know, you can only read about in books, but here at Ohika, you can live it for a moment. To bring it back, it shows the grandeur. It shows the great lifestyles. It shows the commitment and the arts and culture of yesteryear. And, and, and by restoring it, you bring this back to people. You show them what times were like uh, in many, many, many years ago. We teach our children to recycle bottles and plastics and newspaper. And I think that children need to learn that old homes uh, can be recycled as well. Another reason that we wrote the book is to inspire people across America, especially in this economic time, to find creative ways, finding adaptive reuses that can preserve a building and have it serve a purpose in, in this modern day society. A Muttontown mansion named Fairlay faced almost certain destruction in the 1990s. Fairlay was the home of George S. Brewster, heir to a standard oil fortune. The 46-room mansion was built in 1912. It was the home of the Brewster family through 1968, but after several sales, it was eventually abandoned as well. The house was stripped of everything. There wasn't a doorknob left. The paneling was stolen. The pilasters in the living room were stolen. So it was really quite a shell, and I basically said, this house is, is going to be torn down. But it wasn't. The mansion was rescued by new owners who decided to take on the challenge of restoring it. I felt a very strong presence of how beautiful it once was. And a lot of the restoration work was done by recreating the details from old photographs published in Town and Country magazine in 1918. We ended up finding a company that um, replicated some of the original chandeliers, including the ones here in the living room. And all they had to go by were the dimensions of the room and the original photograph. Most people, if you stick them side by side, don't even see the difference between the two um, chandeliers. They're almost identical. And the value of these old homes is now being taught to the next generation. We learned about the history of Long Island, and one of the things we study is how Long Island was a very important um, affluent area during the Gold Coast. We learn all about the, the time when Long Island was an area of tremendous estates and how life was very different back then. Another famous Gold Coast mansion, Westbury House at Old Westbury Gardens, built in 1906, is also preserved in a similar way. Anything that's done, any repairs that need to be made to the house, we go through an exhaustive study of finding just the right materials to match as closely as we can what the original architects had in mind. And the restoration of Quandra Hall in Huntington is following a similar pattern and the building and the property of 33 acres is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. So that gives us all the guidelines um, of, towards the restoration, which is the Gold Coast era. The mansions, I think, are, are something that's more attractive because a lot of people don't live in mansions today and don't get to see mansions, and this is a way of sharing in that, um, that legacy. But despite the efforts of preservation, many of these aging estates are still being lost. The mansion Land's End in Sands Point, which was the inspiration for Daisy Buchanan's house in The Great Gatsby, is currently in danger of being ripped down by developers who want to subdivide the property. 